Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. ICRC presents a new way to help families and communities cope with and manage the challenges of caregiving. We bring to you a form of audio respite, a podcast for caregivers who need self-care. Now is your time. The Inland Caregivers Corner is here to provide encouragement. This podcast is dedicated to providing information to caregivers and tips on self-care from employees of ICRC, those who assist seniors, and members of the community. We bring you Episode 6 of the Inland Caregivers Corner. And thank you for tuning in to episode six of the Inland Caregivers Corner podcast. I hope you all enjoyed the previous chat episode on happiness. Uh, We need more listeners. So tell everyone you know about the Inland Caregivers Corner podcast. They're on YouTube. Some episodes are short, some are long, um, but they all provide great information. For those who have been listening from episode one, thank you so much. And to those just getting started, welcome and thank you for checking out the podcast. check out the last episode that we had which was on happiness it's great it's 10 minutes and it can definitely provide some awesome information for you i'm your host derek chacon and i am a care coordinator with icrc inland caregiver resource center it's september unbelievable the year has just flown by and we're one month closer to halloween which is also my favorite i love fall um and then 2022 is just around the corner Also in September, we're celebrating Healthy Aging Month, Amerindian Month, Hispanic Heritage Month, and Suicide Prevention Month. Uh, With Amer Indian Heritage Month, that is an observance that is held every September in Guyana. It is in honor of Guyana's indigenous peoples. The observance has its beginnings in Amerindian commemorations of September 10, 1957, the day on which Stephen Campbell became Guyana's first Amerindian member of parliament. On September 10, 1955, Guyana's Prime Minister Chetty Yagen officially designated September as Amerindian Heritage Month. In memory of Campbell's achievement, September 10th is celebrated as Heritage Day. September 15th to October 15th is also National Hispanic American Heritage Month. National Hispanic Heritage Month traditionally honors the cultures and contributions of both Hispanic and Latino Americans as we celebrate heritage rooted in all Latin American countries. This observation started in 1968 as Hispanic Heritage Week under President Johnson. It was then expanded by President Reagan in 1988 to cover a 30-day period starting on September 15th and ending on October 15th. It was enacted into law on August 17th, 1988. September 15th is significant because it is the anniversary of independence for Latin American countries Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, and Nicaragua. In addition, Mexico and Chile celebrate their independence days on September 16th and September 18th, respectively. Also, Columbus Day, or Dia de la Raza, which is October 12th, falls within this 30-day period. Lastly, World Alzheimer's Day is Tuesday, September 21st, 2021. On this day, Alzheimer's organizations raise awareness about Alzheimer's and dementia. Alzheimer's is the most common form of dementia, a group of disorders that impairs mental functioning. Alzheimer's has been called a family disease because of the chronic stress of watching a loved one slowly decline affects everyone. There are 5.7 million Americans living with Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's disease is the sixth leading cause of death in the U.S. and the only cause of death among the top 10 in the United States that cannot be prevented, cured, or even slowed down. Today we have two special guests joining us for the podcast. We have bilingual pros counselors, Joel Hernandez and America Navejas. Both have been a part of Pearls at ICRC for two and a half years. Joel is also a caregiver and has provided care to his parents for the last 15 years. Um, welcome to Inland Caregivers Corner. How are you guys doing today? Hi, thank you. We're pretty good. Thank you for having us. Nice. How are you doing, Joel? I'm doing great. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us. Awesome. It's my pleasure. Thank you guys for coming on. I guess the biggest thing that um, that struck me at first was that uh, you were a caregiver. Joel, so you're a caregiver for your parents um, for, well, uh, 
this year, I think it's 15 years, right? Yes, that's that's right. I've been a caregiver for my parents for for quite some time now. I think starting in L7. Gotcha, gotcha. So seeing um, caregiving from uh, the perspective of working with Inland Caregiver Resource Center and the PEARLS program, um, what type of tips could you give our listeners uh, who are caregivers and are currently um, providing care to their loved ones at this time? Any tips or resources that you could share? Yes, absolutely. Um, Take advantage of all the resources that are out there. Uh, Make your life a little bit easier. Uh, Like that saying, work smarter, not harder. Uh, realize that you can't take everything on your own. You know, there are services, there are other services out there that can help you and make not only your life easier, but make the person, your loved one, the person you're caring for, their life easier. And by essence, making your life easier too. So take advantage of it, um, the resources that are out there. Never forget to make time for yourself, even though there's never time. Make time for self-care and just take care of yourself. At the end of the day, if you can't take care of yourself, um, you're not going to be able to take care of your loved one. Awesome. How long have you been? Uh, how long have you been with ICRC and and been a pearls counselor? Um, it's already now going for what two and a half, two and a half years. Yes, um, we, I started in um, in March um, before the pandemic, and um, yeah, it's been about next month. It will be two and a half years. And how about you, America? How did you um, get started as a pearls counselor with ICRC? Um, well, I also had a little bit of experience in caregiving myself, but I didn't know about the services until I was in my second year of uh, my bachelor's in social work, and I became an intern with the agency. I really, really liked the agency, and I was able to get this job. So I'm really grateful to be working here. Nice. I had no idea. So you're, you were a caregiver, too? Just for a little while, yeah, to my grandmother but just for a very short time. But still, um, you, can, you can see, you, you get to experience all the caregiving role, <laughs> even if it's just a short amount of time. Did you have any tips or resources to share? Would, uh, would you agree with the tips that Joel shared for our, our listeners who are caregivers? Uh, well, yeah, don't be afraid to reach out and take advantage of all the services. They're out there. They're for people to take and many of the services are free or very low cost. So just ask, ask and accept all the the services that are offered. Exactly. Right. No need to be prideful. You know, we all need help in, in one way or another, and it's always a good thing to have those resources available to us. It's an insanely good thing. I can't, um, exaggerate that enough you know they are there for those who need the assistance so it's always best to take advantage yeah absolutely yeah joel did you um did you so when you were caregiving um before icrc before you were working with pearls uh what were you doing what were you doing then um well i i jumped for a couple of things um when i graduated college i um i worked at a transitional housing for adults I did that for a short period of time for a few months and then I moved on to um, um, working with um, adolescents, uh, working with out-risk youth in, uh, in the group home settings. I did that for quite some time. I did that for about 13 years right um, before I came to ICRC. 13 years? How old are you? <laughs> I'm 40, what, 44? I think, yeah, 44. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, like, you don't look 44 at all. Like, it's insane. I know I told you this yesterday and that was kind of set up, but <laughs> I want to let you know, <laughs> you don't look 44. Um, so with uh, with working with seniors and adolescents, how did that prepare you uh, for working with ICRC and um, becoming a parole counselor? Well, actually, you know, I, I, I forgot another thing. I did actually work with seniors, too. Um, actually, that's one of the first things I worked when I graduated. I, I worked with seniors at um, at um, adult day health center, and it was really um, it, it 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 was it was really nice. I really enjoyed it. I would probably start working there a little bit long more, but it, it was only part time. I needed full time at um, full time position at the time, but I don't know it um that prepared me to work with adults now. Um, working with adolescents prepared me to have 
patience um, more than anything else and just have the ability to just work with people. Even sometimes, well, uh, it's, it's two different things, you know, working with adolescents, particular at, at risk youth and working with adults. Um, it has a little bit of similarities, but, um, but not so much. Okay. Any, any, um, just curious, any story that you have that sticks out when you are working with, uh, with at risk youth? Cause I'm sure there's plenty, but, uh, was there one that kind of stands out that you that you remember to this day? Uh, man, I mean, it was never a dull moment there. Um, again, you know, working with adolescents and at-risk youth. It, and then again, you know, I, I worked in a, it was like around 15-acre compound that I worked in. So it wasn't like just a regular home, you know, it was a, a compound. So I, to answer your questions, I think the biggest one was um, <laughs> one particular night. I, I used to, towards the end of my, um, career with them. I, I was working overnights, and um, there were some uh, high pursuit um, car car chase. You know, uh, cops were were in pursuit of um, some a, a vehicle. It so happened, and there were three um, three young adults. Um, I think eighteen and twenty or so, like that. Long story to be short. Um, long story short, um, there were like wanted in Texas, in Dallas, Texas, to be exact. They were like in the newspaper and everything else, and they got wind of them, and they hopped in into our facility, and I kind of helped the cops a little bit locate them a little bit. But it was, it was, it was yeah, it was a little bit um something to remember, right? <laughs> yeah. So you're like, you know, pros counselor slash uh, previously a bounty hunter, somewhat, you know, helped out with one case and then retired. So <laughs> that's awesome. So with, um, with you both being um, Pearl's counselors, um, I know we had uh, our, your coordinator, uh, Jennifer Lopez on the show, I believe that was episode three, um, that explained what the Pearl's program is and things like that. But I wanna know what, um, from a Pearl's counselor's perspective, um, what do you feel the, the Pearl's program is and, um, and how can it assist with um, with encouraging seniors, as that's what the um, acronym is, a program to um, <laughs> encourage oh, oh. active rewarding <laughs> lives for seniors. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. I did know it, but I got the A and the E um, mixed up. So uh, we'll start with America. America, um, how uh, what would you say is uh, how would you describe the program and how is it encouraging to um, to seniors? Uh, well, like the acronym, um, it's a program to encourage active and rewarding lives. So that's what we try to do. We work with the participant with any problems they can have or any goals and setting, I think setting those goals, uh, even if they're just small goals, like we say, like baby steps, um, over, uh, like, um, oh gosh, I forgot the word. <laughs> um, conquering, no. Overcome? Achieving, achieving, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> achieving good. those goals um, motivates the person to keep going and keep reaching more goals and stay active with different activities, um, solving problems, uh, becoming more social, more uh, physically active, engaging more in pleasant activities, all that encompasses like the program, the, the goal of the program. Okay. How about you, Joe? Um, no, I, I agree also. I agree completely. I think there's um, a little bit of two parts to, to this program. It's three, but more so like two. I think one of them is the um, problem solving, I think that encourages them and helps the individual become more self-sufficient and build them up a little bit, build their some esteem. Um, and then you have the behavior activations, which is when we encourage them to to participate in social, physical, and pleasant activities. Um, those actually, it's it's geared more to quality of life and making sure that they improve their quality of life and by essence, um, decreasing those um, um, depressive symptoms. That's awesome. I'm definitely glad that um, this program is available 
um, to encourage active and rewarding lives and seniors. I had to <laughs> redeem, redeem myself there. Um, but um, I'm very glad that it is available to those um, who need it. And I have heard many success stories where counselors come in um, and completely um, change a, um, a senior's life just with the 180 of like, you know, making a goal of walking for 10 minutes around her backyard or something like that. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a huge goal, um, but it is something that can be accomplished and achieved. So I'm, I'm definitely um, a big supporter of the Pearls program. And um, for those listening who are curious, um, you can always call ICRC. I'll provide the number after um, this interview and um, and definitely get some more information. Another thing I just want to add to it is because this is a program that's client oriented. So um, we're working whatever the client wants to work on. The, the, the client is at the driver's seat at this. So whatever things they want to work on is whatever we're going to be working on rather than tell them, you know, this is what you need to work on. It's you no, know, whatever the client feels comfortable and they want to work on. It's awesome. So it's not necessarily um, you guiding them. It's more, where do they want to go? What do they want to do? And you're just, um, providing that support, whether it's, uh, emotional or physical, it sounds like. Yes. For the most part. Yes. Like I said, it's, it's client oriented. So they're the ones who are going to be coming up with, um, whatever they want to work on and we're going to be guiding them. We're going to be supporting them. Um, same thing goes with, um, um, whatever they, whatever options or possible solutions they want to, they choose or whatever solutions they want to work. Um, apply to their, to their problems is something they generate themselves. We help them to guide them, um, get, get there. That's great. What is, uh, what would you say your, your favorite part is about um, being a pearls counselor? It's making a, making a change, making actually helping people out in comparison between this and what I did before um, with this, you, you, you get, um, you get solutions pretty much right there and then, you know, uh, when you see the client, you know, at the beginning of the program struggling with problems and issues and obstacles that, that he or she is, it's dealing with. And, you know, you see them a few months down the road or a month or so when they get the program and they figure out like, like Hey, this is not as bad as, as, as I thought it, it was, I could actually, you know, resolve these, I could actually overcome these obstacles, problems, issues, stuff like that when they actually get it and they actually able to surpass their, their their problems and feel better i think that is the best part because you see from the beginning all the way to the end um and you see that progress throughout that's awesome how about how about you america uh what would you say is your favorite part of being a pearls counselor well i think like like joel said um getting to work with people and helping them or assisting guiding them uh, finding solutions to problems they may be having and seeing all the improvement like seeing the difference from the beginning the, the very first sessions and then at the end sessions um seeing how their life have changed in those months what they accomplish i think it's really rewarding Definitely. Just to um, see the progress in one of your clients, um, I can imagine that's completely rewarding. You know why we do this when we see someone um, take charge of them themselves and um, and then push forward and encourage others. Because um, I'm pretty sure with those who who reach success in the program, they're like, oh, you got to you got to check this out. You got to try it. It's great. Um, you know, the pearls councils are really awesome. You know, I imagine you get a lot of referrals with those who um, who encourage who are encouraged by the program we do get some of those clients who who have been referred other other people they they know about because it is a good program definitely so with september um september is healthy aging month and um we're providing awareness awareness to that on uh on the podcast today um so joel how would you how are you ensuring uh you're aging healthy i mean considering you're 44 and you look 24. So uh, what are you doing? What's your secret? <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for the compliment, but I, I, that 24, that, that passed, that she passed sale a long time ago, <laughs> like 20 years ago. Well, um, a healthy diet <laughs> as much as possible. Um, I, I think it's a healthy diet. Um, I can't really eat the things that I used to do when I was a little younger. I think that has changed my mindset 
and that has helped me be able to eat a little bit more, more better, more healthier. Um, I try and, as much as I can eat a plant-based diet as much as I can. Um, however, um, I, I, I still have to have, you know, every so often my barbecue or, or my carne asada or stuff like that, but not as I used to before, you know. Before it was like, I remember when I was a kid growing up, you know, I was fortunate, um, but, you know, uh, some type of meat product was always in the plate, <laughs> you know. Um, but um, as I got older, you know, can't process the same food as we used to before, particularly with, you know, caring for my mom now. You know, I have to make sure that, that um, you know, she eats a nutritious meal and I do the same thing also. So um, eating healthy, um, exercise also, um, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm walking with my mom more. Um, more recently, we actually been walking almost daily, and again, it's just doing a little bit of exercise. I'm not doing as much as I used to do, <laughs> or as much as I would like, but um, I think having a healthy diet helps a lot, and being a little bit active, even if it's just you know 20 minutes a day or half an hour a day, just a breeze walk, you know that little bit does help. Definitely, I'm so glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, definitely taking charge of your health, um, and and also the uh, the mostly plant based eating. I think that's awesome. Um, I don't I don't eat much meat either. I'm kind of in the same boat. Um, I don't necessarily eat red meat mainly because um, I just. I can. It's not uh, appealing. I do. I do have a, a piece here and there. Like, I, and I mean a legitimate like piece, like a ripped piece, um, and it's just still not not something I'm into. Um, but, uh, I do eat like shrimp and, and, uh, fish and things like that, which is, uh, which is really good, um, for the nutrients and things. How about, uh, how about you, America? What, um, what type of, uh, things are you doing to ensure that you're aging healthily? Well, everything Joel said, <laughs> and I, I think I'll add, um, well, listening to my body, I'm, I'm trying to listen to my body more. Like if any food doesn't make me feel good, I try to avoid it. Um, getting more sleep, more rest, um, taking care of myself when I, when my body is telling me to, to take care of myself, like whatever is uh, go to make make a doctor's appointment or a dentist appointment or um, go go to sleep uh, take a nap um, and also trying to limit my stress um, you know it may be difficult but um, try not to worry a lot and just uh, monitoring how I'm feeling emotionally too. That's a good one. I'm glad you brought that up as far as um, monitoring uh, how you're feeling emotionally. I know a lot of uh, folks, and we I think I've talked about this every podcast, um, a lot of folks don't necessarily uh, consider mental health, but mental health is extremely important. It's extremely important to me. Um, you know, you definitely want to monitor how you're feeling, and it's okay to take a break. It's okay to take a nap. Um, it's okay to skip a workout. Um, you know, depending on what your goals are, if you're trying to be healthy and you're just starting out, you know, if you're tired and you're sore, definitely, um, you know, it's okay to skip a day. Um, but it's not, it's not like the end all be all thinking, um, you know, still eat right. still um, consider yourself, um, when making those healthy choices, but, um, you know, it is, I want to emphasize that rest is also important just as much as, as exercising or eating healthy. Um, how would you say the PEARLS program assists with healthy aging? Does it, does that assist with healthy aging at all? Uh, well, I think yes, um, because we also, well, like Joel said, it's very client driven. So whatever the client wants to work on, so whatever they feel like they see as a problem or they worry about or is causing them stress, uh, anxiety. So, but I think by solving that or getting to work on that, it's improving their, their mood, their quality of life. And, you know, stress and anxiety and depression can also have a toll on, on your physical health. So I, I guess that that also helps. And also the behavior activation part, like uh, encouraging them to stay active physically, socially, 
um, engaging in pleasant activities and things that they enjoy doing. Any Anything to add, Joel, with um, Pearl's um, assisting with healthy aging? Again, it's the behavior activation, so that we encourage them to do actually some type of physical activity. So that also, um, we do encourage them. So it's one of the things that when we have our sessions, um, we help them, we encourage them to schedule at least one physical activity for them to do. Um, and it could be anything within their means, you know? If it's, you know, walking to the mailbox, walking around the house, or, you know, grabbing a can of a soup or a bottle of water and doing some curls, some lifted, or even just anything within their means. The whole point is getting that blood circulating. You know, we encourage them, we actually encourage them to participate in one activity, at least, if not more. Um, the social uh, part of it and the pleasant activities also works with the mental because, you know, when you're socializing someone else, you know, you're interact interacting with someone else, um, it, it helping you feel a little bit better. You know, you're not isolated, you know, so that helps your, your mental status, I would, I would think. So same thing with pleasant activities, you know, getting back into the things that, you know, maybe at one point you used to enjoy doing it because you're in a, in a different state of mind where you, you're no longer um, have the interest or to do it, we kind of encourage them to get back on it, you know, get back on the bicycle, so to speak, and, um, um, and just get on it. Even if it's um, like that saying, you know, fake it until you make it. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. even if you, <laughs> yeah, because a lot of times people are, are in, in a, in a not, not so good place and they lose that, that drive. They used to, for example, if they used to like to, go swimming for example you know or just anything you know and it could be reading a book whatever it could be but they used to enjoy doing it and because of the state of mind they're not doing it anymore we do definitely encourage them to just get back on it and within time hopefully they will get back into the group of things they will enjoy it again and it will help their psyche and it will help them improve their quality of life in essence will include their healthy aging Definitely. So we, when I was um, listening to you, is there is there only one uh, goal or activity that uh, the client chooses or can it be multiple or is it, I know you said it's client driven. So if they have multiple, they can do that or? They, um, so the way it's set up, um, our, it's called our problem solving treatment. Um, it's, this, it's seven steps to it. So the first step is to identify what the problem is. You know, not just the problem, but identify what's the root of the problem, what's the actual problem. A lot of times people think that one particular thing is the problem, but you know, after we kind of probe a little bit more and ask a couple of more questions, we find out that that's just a superficial problem. So we really go down to the root of the problem. So again, that's step one. Step two is to have them choose their goals. What is the goal they want to work on? Um, and I, I'll let America touch that a little bit more on the SMART goals. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, there's different steps, and I guess I'm making it a little bit too long. But one of, um, well, that's the problem solving. You know, it's just one, one problem they want to work on and then have one goal they want to accomplish. Within that, as they're trying to figure out how to solve that problem, they come up with at least three or four possible solutions. But out of those three or four possible solutions, they pick one they really want to work on. So that's the one they work on for that particular session. However, there's still three, you know, two or three more other possible solutions. If that problem doesn't work, I mean, that solution doesn't work, they could always go back and try to work on the other, pro the other possible solutions. But the whole point of them is to focus on one. And if that doesn't work, you know, they could either revisit it and tweak it a little bit, or they could pick another possible solution is the one they use. But what we're talking about as far as like, I'm not sure, um, the behavior activations, which is the social, the physical, and the pleasant activities, those are just, um, it's not part of the problem solving treatment. Um, it is part of the worksheet that we work with them, but it's just them, you know, picking an activity, one activity for those three different things, physical, social, and pleasant. And that's aside from um, the problem solving. That's, uh, that's awesome. It sounds like um, just very attentive uh, coaching, which is great. I mean, who wouldn't be encouraged by someone there saying like, okay, that's not working out. Let's try this. Let's do this. Let's do that. Like, yeah, I think that's uh, that's a really 
awesome way to look at it is um, it's just attentive coaching. I mean, is that wrong to say, or do you feel that's pretty accurate? I think it um, it sounds accurate um, because yeah, we are um, like guiding them through the steps, like like he was saying, like the seven steps of problem solving. We want them to learn those steps, to apply them in everyday life, everyday problems. So it becomes like a natural thing to do. We really want for every session, well, for every session, we, we work on one thing. We just want to work on one specific thing at each session and the program is six to eight sessions. So they can, we can work on different problems or they can keep working on, on one problem for a few times and however they feel. Um, we want to work on something that's specific, measurable, attainable, um, realistic and time bound. And for those who didn't catch it, that was the acronym for SMART goals there. So with um, with the pandemic going on in COVID-19, um, I imagine there's maybe been an increase in um, in clients that uh, that you've been having. How has um, how has that been as far as uh, working remotely um, with clients on uh, with the clients of the PEARLS program? Well, we had to um, adjust the program a little bit uh, because it was community-based. So before the pandemic, we will uh, drive to the client's home and have the sessions there. So with COVID, we had to change everything to be over the phone, over uh, any uh, video platform they feel comfortable with. Um, so yeah, that was a little bit of an adjustment, uh, but we we were able to keep it running and we were receiving referrals because the pandemic, the uh, social climate, everything was uh, causing stress, isolation, increasing depressive symptoms in people. So I think it was it was a really good thing that we were able to adjust and adapt and continue serving the people who needed it the most at the time. And we are continue doing it. Just to add a little bit, it's like we're trying to work with the client as much as possible. We try to make it as much um, convenience for them as possible. Um, unfortunately, we're not able to do in person because of the pandemic. However, we still try to offer our service either, you know, over a video conference or um, over the phone. You know, just one little bit thing to say about that though too, it, it actually opened more opportunities for some uh, for some participants because of the pandemic. You know, now they're forced to do some teleservice, but because of the teleservice, now they're able to reconnect with more family members, more loved ones say they perhaps didn't connect in the past. I had um, clients before where they were telling me, you know what, I kind of hate this, but at the same time, you know, because of this, because of the pandemic, it forced me to get in on Zoom, forced me to get on onto this internet. <laughs> um, but by doing so, you know, I was able to see my great grandkids, you know, they live like way far yonder, you know, right on the other, other side of the world. And I'm able to see them, you know, something I would have never done so before if it wasn't for this pandemic. So, you know, something, good something that usually comes out of it and i think that's just a, a little piece that came out of that definitely it's it's um i feel that people thrive um in these types of situations to where maybe they like you said learn a new skill to where they're able to see their grandkids or um just become more i don't want to say um more social because it's virtual but in a way it's it is more social um because it's you know it is a person right in front of you um whether it's zoom virtual calls even like um for doctor's appointments so you have like teledoc and you have um i think it's called my chart that's something new that um hospitals have been doing which i think is really cool because it just goes right to your phone um how has caregiving been for you joel in uh with the pandemic and everything I said it has its good and it has its bad. Me personally, because I am taking care of my, of my mom, um, I was taking care of both my parents. Fortunately, my, my father passed away and at the, right before this pandemic and at the end of um, 2018. 
but with my mom, I have noticed, and this is just something that everyone who's taking care of a loved one, um, particularly someone who has dementia, um, should really, you know, take um, take a, take a look at it. Um, is that a lot of time? How did it affect me, or how did it affect my, um, particularly with my mom, is that um, we isolated ourselves from everybody. Uh, you know, not seeing any, you know, none of her grandkids or, or my sister, not seeing anyone. It was just her and me. You know, didn't really see any neighbors or anything because this whole pandemic stuff, um, stuff really, you know, prevented us from doing it. You know, I didn't want her to, to, to get ill. She is in a, um, one of those um, high, um, high risk. So we isolated ourselves. Well, um, it helped us be safe, but it also kind of um, set her back as far as her mental status. Um, not being able to socialize, not being able to go out, not being able to um, to be active like she was really did um, um, affect her um, with her dementia. It set her back a little bit. So now that things have opened up a little bit, now that we both are, are uh, have our our uh, back, our shots. Um, it's we're getting out there a little bit more, you know, being more active. That's why we started walking a little bit more. So it affects us because we isolated ourselves. Um, you know, who wants to be isolated? <laughs> we are social animals, you know, social mammals. Um, I would just say just a little bit of advice for anybody. You know, even if with this pandemic, try not to try to still be social socialized with other people. You know, even if it's on video com on video conference or or on on the phone, but you know, just try to still be active, be physically active, be socially active. Yeah, I think that's definitely true with um with this pandemic. It's like we're not able to be those social creatures that we are and and we do feel a sense of um isolation and to where we're not able to socialize whether it's family or um or friends or even just doing the things we used to do like going to church or going to dinner like it's all it's all changed um my condolence is also on um to you on, on losing your dad with that it, it becomes tough um and that there's a need for community. Um, and I believe you you are also involved in the bereavement support group. Is that is that right? The bereavement support right. group that we have? So how how is that? How has that been? Um, I know it's new. It just started this year or last year, maybe? Did it start last year or it started this year? I think it started for us this year, but I think it started before then. Is, is that correct, America? Yeah, I think it's been going on since last year. Um, but we took over this year and we have it also in Spanish. We will be having it again beginning October and it's going to be, I believe, uh, 10 weeks. Is that correct? Yes, I, I believe so. So, um, so we, it's, we took a break from it. Um, and we're going to be starting up, um, next, oh, next month, October. Um, how's it going? I think it, it it's it's going well. Um, we took it over from from Jennifer. I think Jennifer started it, and she kind of had a nice little um, um, group of uh, people already in in the bereavement group. Um, it, it's it's well. It's, it's a good way for people to um, you know just to de stress, how to cope how to see that they're not the only ones dealing with, you know, with, with the bereavement, but finding the support with other people, finding um, the commonality and, and understanding that any other people that are dealing with the same situations, um, they are, it helps them, you know, it helps them seeing that they're not alone and there are other people. And um, it also helps them share ways of how to, how to cope with it also. Um, we also try to kind of like, you know, bring a little bit of information and how to help them process through it as well. I'm actually looking forward um, to um, starting all over again um, next month. Um, one of the reasons we took a break and one of the reasons we kind of adapted a little bit, we want to make sure that we include all these holidays that are coming up. We want to make sure that we have, um, they're there, uh, it's there for them, particularly when they need it the most, when you have all these, you know, holidays coming. Definitely. With that, with that being said, um, 
you know, September is also uh, Suicide Prevention Month. And I know with the holidays and they are coming up, um, you know, once uh, pretty much once October hits or maybe even September, maybe, you know, people consider that like holiday season now. Um, there is a um, lot more depression and a lot more um, sadness for people during the holidays. Um, and then also, you know, you can't forget with, with seniors, you know, some seniors do get uh, really upset uh, during the holidays, especially if you're by yourself or if you're alone or you just lost a loved one. Um, how does how does that affect seniors like with the holidays? And Well, we want to make sure that that um, this bereavement support group is available when they need it the most. Um, we want to make sure that um, we encompass that time period when they need it. Um, a lot of ones, again, you know, it's one less person um, to set a table, you know, come Thanksgiving, that's, that's going to be an empty table. And that's going to stand out a lot. And then it's going to affect a lot of people. And having someone, having a support network that help them process. Um, I have a couple of um, um, members um, in my bereavement group um, that they, they kind of have the, the little in crowd in the sense where they, you know, even after the group or even before the group, they, they talk to each other, they, they have their own back. So having that um, support and having it available for them, I think that's, that, that's very important. And America, how, how can these depressive symptoms, how, do, how can they affect um, physical health? Do they affect physical health at all or? Well, yes. Um, the depressive symptoms, um, stress, anxiety, even loneliness, um, kind of physical health in many ways. For example, what we see a lot is a lot of extremes, not sleeping enough or sleeping a lot, not eating, having no appetite or overeating. So a lot of these things can also affect or have a toll on our bodies or if we are not motivated to go to the doctor or to take care of ourselves to take a shower to um i don't know take our medicine all that can can affect and it, it becomes like a cycle um because if also our physical health can affect our mental health so we can get caught up in that cycle I think that's something uh, a lot of folks don't think about because, you, you know, I'll speak for myself. You're, you're really just trying to, and I'm not trying to be dramatic, but you, you're just trying to get through the day. Like you're trying to ensure you're focused, ensure that you're, you're happy, you're doing the things that you want to do. Like, it's so funny because I don't know if you guys are, are on Instagram or social media, but you you tend to follow these little blurbs of like, today's a great day, do what you love, blah, blah, blah. Like it tells you these like steps to get through the day to be happy, but it's like, it's very general, you know, like for me, I'm trying to be happy throughout the day. So I want to, you know, make sure my kids are okay, make sure they're at school, make sure they're, um, they have their lunch packed, make sure I'm eating, blah, blah, blah. Like you're just trying to get to through the day, but I, I will say at certain points in the day, it, you, you hit a low point for me. Um, it's like I'm tired or I'd rather be playing with my dog or like being outside or something else. And it's like, all right, but I got to like, I got to suck it up and I got to keep going um, because I can totally see myself. If all of a sudden I'm like, I'm tired and I just, just check out. Well, now like my work doesn't get done. Clients don't get their services. I don't get this, that, and the other done. And it's just, it can be a, a pretty vicious cycle to where if you're in that mindset constantly where you're like, you just don't want to do anything, you know, all of a sudden everything slows down and you're not getting anything done and you're not progressing. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's what we try to prevent. And also because this program, uh, Pearls, it's prevention and early intervention. So we try to attack or uh, cut those vicious cycles or uh, unhealthy um routines before they become something more difficult to manage something more overwhelming definitely i think that's a great point if um someone is is feeling 
that way. If listeners who, who listen to this are feeling that way, um, get in contact with um, Inland Caregiver Resource Center. Um, we can definitely give you the number to Pearls. Um, I know it is only um, currently for those in Riverside County. It is only for Riverside County, right? Unfortunately, um, right now we're only servicing Riverside County. Um, there, to my knowledge, there is no bomb pearls in, in San Bernardino County. Uh, at least not no more. There was at one point, but not, not anymore. Um, hopefully, fingers crossed, hopefully maybe in the near future we could also incorporate um, San Bernardino County um, in, in pearls, but for the time being, it's just Riverside. Gotcha. Well, thank you. Thank you for letting uh, those who listen know that. Um, so if you are in Riverside County and um, are definitely, uh, if, if this conversation is hitting you, um, you know, give us a call. Um, we do we have plenty of services, plenty of resources. Um, and, you know, we, we obviously want to help with the resources that we have. Um, give us a call. You know, uh, I know one of our employees can assist you um, with just providing information to you. Um, one way of looking at it, at this, um, you know, we all have problems, you know, we all have, you know, encounter a rough time, you know, it's, it's natural, you know, unfortunately, it's natural, that's life, you know, we encounter hard, hard patches in our life, um, and it's a, a normal life, but what's not normal is not being able to um, snap out of it, you know, a lot of times, like I said, we all fall into hard times, but for the most part, most of us are able to snap out, out of it and, you know, get, you know, get back on it you know, be able to get our life strained together. But it is not normal for people who are not able to kind of or snap out of it. You know, a lot of times they feel like they're stuck uh, and it's just a cycle. You know, they feel a little bit better, then they fall back into it. They feel a little bit better, they fall into it, or they're just not able to get out of that rut. Um, and you can look at it uh, kind of like uh, if you have a cold, you know, if you have a cold, you know, you know, you start getting the sniffles, you know, you have runny nose, stuff like that. That's the sign that something's wrong with you. You know, you're, you're, you're getting sick. Well, the same thing, you know, if you see yourself like, you know, no motivations, you know, you, you're sleeping a whole lot or you, you're not able to sleep at all because you're so worried um, or so stressed out or have anxiety because issues, problems, obstacles, things you're not able to overcome. Um, and then you start seeing that, you know, maybe your eating patterns, you know, are, are affected. You, you're not hungry or just eating a whole lot. You know, the, you know, these symptoms affect people in a variety of ways. And you could look at those symptoms as kind of like, you know, if you have a cold, you have the sniffles, or you have runny nose, same thing. You know, if you're finding yourself where, you know, you can't focus, you, you know, you can't really um, have a good night's sleep, you know, there might be other issues, but those issues may be causing you that stress. So when that's happening to you and you're not able to snap out of it, you're not able to get out that run, so to speak, then listen to your body. You know, there might be something going on. It's telling you something. There's something going on. And if you're not able to snap of it, you know, you should, you know, try to help yourself in getting some resources. And Pearl is just one of them. You know, it's not meant for everybody. It's not a one size fits all. But for those that are able to help them, they're able to help them a, a lot. Um, I'm, I'm sure I'm biased because I'm, you know, part of this program. But one of this, one of the things I like about this program is that it's evidence based. So this is a program that's proven to work over time. It will help you. Um, but again, with any other program, you know, the more effort you put in it, the more you get back out of it. So look at yourself. Look at if you're not able to snap out of it and you're still having these depressive symptoms. You know, give us a call and see if something that we could help you. And, you know, if anything, let's say that, you know, well, you, you talk to one of us and, you know, we find out that this may be not an ideal program for you, we're still not going to let, you know, let you out of hang. You know, we're still going to try to provide you with some resources, some a, a program that may be more aligned to your needs. So in doubt, give us a call and we try to help you as much as we can. And if we're not able to help you, then we'll provide you with some resources that could help you. Perfect. I mean, with that, I'm, you know, I don't think anything more needs to be said. That's, that was on point. I also got word that um, we're going to be starting a uh, Spanish podcast for ICRC and that you both will be um, guesting on that as well um, with our uh, outreach coordinator, Eva, um, who's going to be doing that. Um, so how is that? That sounds exciting. Yeah being able to reach more people 
in their language. So yeah, I'm excited to have the first episode out. Very cool. Yeah, Same. you guys are the first guests. I'm actually, this is the first time I'm actually doing a podcast. So um, <laughs> you're my first um, podcast. So uh, I'm, I'm excited, you know, I'm excited, uh, you know, for you to give us a platform and be able to express, I mean, um, to inform everybody about this program, this wonderful program, this is free program, by the way. <laughs> so the more people we could reach out, the better, um, you know, there's people that need this and, you know, hopefully they are able to hear us through you, through Eva and through all, any other um, means, uh, media that we're out there to, um, you know, promote our, our, our service, our program. Well, thank you both so much um, for being a guest on the Inland Caregivers Corner podcast. Uh, this one was awesome. Um, it was really great talking to you both. And um, I wish you good luck with the coming year, with the holidays. And uh, all those who are listening, uh, definitely get in contact if you are interested in the Pearls program. Um, as Joel said, it is free. Um, you know, definitely take advantage of it. Anything else you guys want to add before uh, before we sign off here? So I just want to touch on one thing. Earlier when I was talking about those seven steps, I didn't want to make it seem that it's like overwhelming. At first, with anything, any any new thing that you do sometimes could be a little bit overwhelming, but it's really simple. It's only a one sheet paper that we work on every session. It's not that much complicated, but again, just with anything you do for the first time, it might seem a little bit complicated, but believe me, it's not. Once you get the hang of it, then you know, not only is it going to help you for the here and now, whatever you're dealing with, but it's a life skill that's going to help you, you know, what whatever life throws at you. So if it seemed a little bit complicated, it really isn't. And thank you again. Thank you for giving us that platform to be able to talk to you guys a little bit about us and about our program as well. Um, thank you so much. My pleasure. America, any, any last words? Uh, well, thank you for inviting us and giving us this platform to talk more about the program like like joe said it's it's a really great program so yeah if you have any questions you can contact us um don't be afraid to ask to reach out if you need help it's totally okay i hope you enjoyed episode six of the inland caregivers corner podcast let me know listeners if you enjoyed the episode um, subscribe to the inland caregiver resource center page on youtube and listen to our previous episodes along with all upcoming episodes i hope you'll join me again in october as we discuss breast cancer awareness and mental illness i'm sorry that's mental health awareness month um, mental illness awareness month uh, world mental health day world stroke day and my favorite halloween we will have some great information on these topics, so stay tuned for that episode in October. If you, a neighbor, friend, relative, or colleague need resources with caregiving, please contact Inland Caregiver Resource Center at 800-675-6694, add us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash ICRC1985, follow us on Instagram at Inland Caregiver, like and subscribe to Inland Caregiver Resource Center on YouTube, and of course, check out our beautiful new website at www.inlandcaregivers.org. Keep listening to Inland Caregivers Corner for information and resources as we continue to cope with and manage the challenges of caregiving together. I'm Derek Chacon, and continue to care for yourself, loved ones, and your community. Take care. <laughs>